Let's go. The Ace and TJ family presents Unfiltered, Uncensored, and Uninterrupted. Well, almost. Right here. Let's go. This is Share Funny from the Ace and TJ Show Plus. Um, anytime I'm on any um, any internets or whatnot where they can have spam coming at me, it's uh, I just get bombarded with recipes all the time. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And this one just popped up, and it doesn't it doesn't sound it, well, it sounds kind of vulgar. What is that called, Riggins? An easy ranch taco pie. <laughs> Ooh. Easy ranch taco pie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I'll be making that. I want that. How easy is it? It's the uh, easiest. Mm. You know, I'm not a fan of a taco salad. Yeah, no. But you can eat the bowl. I don't get so the the bowl tastes like stale bread. Yeah, it's not good. It tastes like um communion wafers. <laughs> <laughs> it's like bread. What is that? Um, so we went to this um, restaurant to meet with our uh, manager Adam for lunch yesterday in the in the big dangerous city, and um, I ordered a chicken sandwich, and um, the server um, said, "What? Which side do you want? Uh, fries?" And I said, "Ah." Oh. And she goes, we have this, this, and we have tots. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, bring me the uh, tot, the tater tots. Because I wasn't really looking at the menu. She was rattling off what they have. I was, you know. And I always get nervous when I don't have a side choice ready when we've been yeah. sitting there for 20 minutes. Yeah. And I don't know why, because I just should have said fries, because that's what I'd been thinking the whole time. So anyway, the plate comes out, and they're sweet potato tots. Mm. Oh no! That's not you. Don't just you don't call sweet right. potato tots tots. And you're right. She never said a word about those being sweet potato tots mm -mm. when she mentioned tots. Because I almost got them, and then I thought, no, nah, I'm gonna go with the fries. No. Yeah, but then Ace traded with me. Yeah, I'll eat the tots. I, I don't mind mm. sweet potato tots. I like them. I just don't get that sweet potato fries and and tots over regular. If you can. Have. Unless you're trying to be a little more healthy. That's why they're, they're supposed to be slightly healthy. Right. But I was eating a fried chicken sandwich. I was with eating mayo, chicken club wrap. That was mayo only, and ranch. Yeah. That was my was only eating, meal yesterday, so it was fine. I was eating a taco pie. <laughs> An easy ranch taco pie. <laughs> yep. Mmm. You smell it. And um, meanwhile, Adam is just talking to us about normal things, and he's so loud and it's just because yeah. you know he cusses all the time when yeah. he's just talking in a normal conversation. But if somebody overheard that, they would think that he was just on fire, mad, because as loud he was, how loud he was talking. And he wasn't. Do it like give like do an give an example if we're just talking like this. So that's when we we have to say then. Well, you know this effing thing is going to be working just right the way we want it, and this. F and blah, blah, blah. It was louder than that, probably. Probably louder than that, because it was a louder run. Mm -hmm. Was there music playing? That he no. no, it was just, but it, it, the, the place is noisy, because it had a lot of, lot of people talking and everything. Um, but then finally I go, why, why are you yelling? He goes, am I being loud? Okay, all right, all right. Which one's the New Yorker, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yes, okay, so stop. What would you just go to? Because <laughs> the, yeah. the guy behind us, uh, at the table, finally uh, look back like, what's going on? Like there was, you would think that there was a, a, a big argument going on. That's with what the, it is. The volume of, of him. He spent more time in New York recently, and yeah. then he comes back down here, and it, it, it's you know going to take That's him a minute. That's a good minute. point. He spent about a month mm -hmm. or so up there. Yeah, you're right. They're just like, ah, loud. Yeah. He was really mm -hmm. loud yesterday. Mm -hmm. you're right. Mm -hmm. Dude, <laughs> dial it down. Dial it down. But you know, um, <laughs> The Midwesterner can be just as loud as the New Yorker in public, just with a different a different tone. Usually the Midwest women are louder, like the older women. Or also if your family's from the Midwest. Yeah, Rob's whole family's from Michigan, so I bet it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like a 
a bomb going off in there when somebody <laughs>, laughs. Because, I mean, Rob's loud himself, and he, mm-hmm. he grew up in the South. It's just in his blood. If your family's all together, Rob, sitting in the living room, is it just is it is it super loud in there? Uh, it can be, yeah. Um, my niece is actually louder than I am. Really? Believe that or not. That's very feminine. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. men do love loud women. That's what, you know, you look on any dating profile of a guy and it's what kind of women are you into? He'll say loud. Be still my heart. Yeah. yeah. A loud woman. <laughs> Forget about pretty. I want, to be, I want her to be loud. <laughs> when she, was, when she was younger, the inside voice was never a thing. Yeah, I want her to be loud and cuss a lot. I saw, I saw a TikTok the other day, and it was a, a guy that a guy had stitched, and it was a lady complaining about the men that she meets in her life and how, the, you know, nobody wants to hang around. And she was very, uh, the mm-hmm. guy behind her comes on and goes, maybe it's because you're really loud. Oh, you, remember when I, you remember when I told that girl that, that time on the radio when we used to do that thing of, uh, where they would call and, and I would ask them questions and tell them why they're single or why yeah. they don't <laughs> have a tells you why you're single. That was great. Yeah. And that, I could tell, and I told her, I said, uh, well, maybe it's because you're loud. A lot of men don't like loud talkers and stuff. And she goes, well, you know, I have been told that. People say that a lot. And we listen to them. <laughs> she couldn't hear them over herself. Yeah. <laughs> but I said it nicely. And I never, <laughs> never wanted to hurt anybody's feelings. Hmm. Or I just said, I'm kidding. It's a joke. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't. No, that time it wasn't. It that was wasn't information she needed yeah. to know. Right. Hmm. Because one of the other things is I like to go out, I like to drink and have fun and all that. And I said, well, when you're drinking, most people, when they're drinking, they get a little louder than they normally are. So do you do that? Because you're already <laughs> you know, you're already making us turn the volume down on the control board here. <laughs> but you're loud ass. I don't but know, I don't baby. Think, but I don't, women don't like loud ass men either. All the time. No. Do they? I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. No. But but my wife gets <laughs> like she gets aggravated with me because I'm so paranoid about it, and she'll start to say something, and the rest like, hey, people are listening. Oh my god, I'm barely talking. <laughs> you can barely hear me. <laughs> you are so paranoid. Maybe. Hmm. Because I'm not a loud person. No, you're not. Mm. No, I Me don't know. either. <laughs> yeah. Ace, you're not loud unless, like, a, there's a situation or something. Or you mean, like, a monster? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his, vo- his volume starts low, and then it kind of grows. But it doesn't go, go too high, though. Yeah. Mm. Well, and coming from Rob, that's... <laughs> Good, yeah, because <laughs> he's the loudest ever. <laughs> there are times, and I think people think TJ's joking, but he's 100% correct. If Rob laughs or he'll just say something, and it can be kind of startling in here in the morning sometimes, yeah. especially since you can't see me, yeah, it just but comes out of nowhere. when and, or if you and Alexis are talking, and something like suddenly there's a you know, do you want to be emphatic with the state? Well, you don't know. It's, it's It could be very, like, it makes you yeah. jerk a little bit. Yeah, because I'm jumpy anyway about stuff, it's just in general. Yeah. Loud noises or people walking up on me when I don't know they're there. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you jumping? What you up to? You're always so jumpy. God, that's the What thing. you guilty about? Yeah, always the assumption that you're up to something yeah. or guilty yeah. of something. <laughs> That's fun. Uh-huh. <laughs> or when somebody busts in the door, they just boom, come in the door really fast when you're in there relaxed or something. Or say you're just sitting, lying in the bed about ready to go to sleep. Yeah. And somebody burst into the door. Uh-uh. What are you doing? Why are you all jumpy? Because <laughs> I was almost asleep. Just about there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had a rough night last night trying to sleep. Speaking of that, I had to pee in the night, which try, I don't like doing that. I hate that. That's the mm-hmm. worst ever. Because then trick? I got to change the sheets. And <laughs> so. Just let it flow, baby. <laughs> I hate that. Mm. Yeah, I had a hemorrhoid attack last night. Did you really? Yeah, and then I had to go 
Uh, Are you asleep? Uh, and, oh. and it wakes you up. I bet it does. Oh. I, the way I've seen you all these years, the way I've seen you jump out of your chair and walk out of the room mm -hmm. and have, I cannot imagine what that's like when you're sleeping. You know, and now I'm, I'm, you know, I've got that CPAP mask on and it's got a hose coming out of it and I get tangled up in that trying to get out of the bed to go, you know, get to the medicine. I would assume it's worse than a Charlie horse waking uh, up with that. Yes. Yeah. And so I, I went, Right after that, and I just laid down on the bed um, on my stomach, waiting for the pain to subside. So I guess it subsided, and I fell back to sleep at the same time. And the next thing I know, hey, hey, put your mask on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So when Jody was coming to bed, I'm lying in there, I guess, snoring on my stomach. What a scene. I mean, you got hemorrhoid attacks, you got yeah. a mask on your face. I mean, golly, you can't even go to sleep. And you finally get back to mm -hmm. sleep only to be awakened by somebody tell you, put your mask on. Hey. <laughs> it's like, yeah. like the nightingale. <laughs> Just yeah. gently. Yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> mask on. Oh, my God. Mask on, Mr. Miyagi. <sighs> oh, good morning. <laughs> it's like an angel waking me up. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> Spread eagle on the bed, face down, ass up. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow! I know. Okay, so a, once you put um, the mask on, it is a on, sexy, sexy joy living man. with me. Once you put the mask on, do you still lay face down and just have to turn your head off to the side with the mask, or what? No, I have to turn. The, the, you can't sit yeah. on your phone. But okay. uh, if she hadn't uh, awakened me to do that, I would have. I would have been waking up anyway. Yeah. Without the without the mask, damn! I know it's rough. It's rough out here in these streets. Yeah, <laughs> them sheets are rough. Yeah. Mm. Are you able to go right back to sleep for the third time once you put the mask back on? Yeah, I was. Okay. But uh, sometimes, if I wake up to just pee normally, yeah. I don't go back to sleep. And I have awakened. Oh, this may be heard buzzing me. Hey. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> so she, I guess she's not listening because I was about something else. Um, yeah, so I did go back to sleep last, last night, night, but but still, it's interrupted sleep. It's, anytime that happens, it's just uh, and I was exhausted too because you know we were in those meetings all day, and right? Everything. Oh yeah, and those meetings like that exhaust me. More than if I were out, um, you know, working with uh, with manual labor <laughs> in yeah. the hay field or something. <laughs> what? I'm with you. <laughs> just, it, it, how tiring is it to go work in a hay field, TJ? <laughs> I'm not saying you're wrong, but it sounds I've very worked, dramatic. I have, have worked, worked in, in a hay field. Hay yeah. yeah. All right. Take yeah, it back. I always said that that's what if you go to hell. Uh, what you're going to have to do for eternity, the punishment is going to be you're going to have to haul hay. And two a day football practices. Yeah. That's what you're gonna have to do. All the Never while that two a day devil, football, but hauling hay is hell, it's hard work. All the while devil poking your ass with that pitchfork. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was I was exhaustful yesterday. Like, oh, I'm just burnt. And then a hemorrhoid attack. And yeah, and then all you want to do is go <laughs> well, sleep I mean, and your ass on fire. That may be why I had the attack because I was sitting on my ass all day. Oh really? In mm -hmm. this chair for four hours, and then going and sitting from. Twelve thirty to four, something yeah. like that. Two meetings, yeah, but one right after the other, and uh -huh. and then you know I, I don't have that thing in my truck anymore where I can stand and and drive. <laughs> <laughs> I had to drive home. It's funny that's meant to be shared. This is the Share Funny Podcast from the Ace and TJ family. If you want to sleep better and lose weight, then the product that you need is called Calitrin, or you can pronounce it Calitrin. Very easy for you to get. Just go to acetj.com slash weight loss. acetj.com slash weight loss for Calitrin. The Johnson Group Facility Services is a commercial cleaning company that focuses more on customer satisfaction than the bottom line because each customer works directly with the owners every step of the way. If you need any commercial cleaning, the Johnson Group can handle it. Get details at acetj.com slash clean. Share Funny is a production of the Ace and TJ family. For more, download the Ace and TJ app in your app store.
Now, more of the Share Funny Podcast. During the regular old morning show, we found out that uh, Tech D. Rob um, endangers his life and other motorists by driving and eating uh, cheesy tots and cheese fries with a fork. Correct. Um, this Megan that always um, messages us, she said, Rob, you're my idol, eating cheesy tots with forks and stuff while driving. You're going to have to... You're gonna to have to learn me, dude. So you got to learn her how to do that. Hey. <laughs> Rob, do you get something to eat every day when you leave here? So you eat on your drive home every day? Not always. No. Okay. So if you if you don't, do you have lunch at home, or do you stop somewhere and grab lunch closer to your house? Uh, you, if I'm getting lunch, it's going to be somewhere up here almost always. Okay. Hey, what is the longest uh, you've ever waited outside of a place, Rob, for them to either open or start serving lunch? Uh, I don't. I don't do that very often. But last week it was about ten minutes. Oh, that's not bad. No. Was it eleven o'clock? You were waiting on some place to open at eleven? No, it was. Uh, I wanted McDonald's to switch from breakfast to lunch. Okay. So, um, so you got a sausage biscuit just to snack on while you were waiting on lunch? <laughs> no. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. Give me it's a sausage appetizer. biscuit. I'm just going to eat it over here while I wait. Just give me a shout when you mm. switch over to lunch. I'm going to come order my lunch. Just a sausage biscuit to sharpen up my appetite. <laughs> Wet the whistle. That would be incredible to do, though. So um, what else do you eat while you're driving that would be more dangerous than I – because mean, it is. It's like anything you're going to eat with a utensil, it requires a utensil, is hard right. while you're driving. Yeah, I think that's the most complicated one. Uh, Taco Bell has those cheesy Fiesta potatoes that are sour cream, potatoes, and cheese. I eat those with a fork while I'm driving. How, was that coming up? A boat kind of container? Uh, it's, it's like a little little circle plastic thing. It's, 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 not, it's not very large. A bowl? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a circle. It's, it's plastic. I don't know what you call it. Uh, it's got some depth to it, so stuff can go down in it. It holds things. Yeah. <laughs> a dog could drink out of it. It's not coming to me. Uh, <laughs> Oh god! Mm. So, but you're not you're not eating a ribeye or anything. No, no nothing. I have, the road. I have to cut because that would be that would be <laughs> the word. Yeah. She looked over and saw somebody eating a steak. <laughs> like, oh shit! Look, they're eating a steak. <laughs> I would just roll it up and eat it like a you know, like a fruit roll up mm. all rolled up. <laughs> but you know they make those things that hook to the steering wheel that are, are you use them as a table or a desk or something. But they're not supposed to be used while you're driving. Yeah, because if your it's wheel when, moves, yeah. everything goes off. It's when you're parked. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I find difficult is eating something, even when I'm parked, uh, f- that's on the center console where mm-hmm. you got to turn to the side and eat it. Yeah, I, I agree. I hate that. So I, I would like that, that table thing. You know, and I could chop up my cocaine on it. Sure. <laughs> Be good. But I don't eat in the in the truck very often anymore. I don't either. Yeah. I don't. I don't eat in a truck either. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? It was somebody that used to uh that used to work for us that wouldn't wouldn't eat any of like get they would get fast food and never open it until they got home, no matter what. That's that's outrageous. And um yeah, he said, well, I'm going straight home, and I don't yeah. want to eat in the car. I've done that before, though. You've got food, just, you know, I want to wait till I get home to eat. Oh, yeah. hmm But most people, though, would at least reach in and get a fry. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. But then I always think, though, that once you say it's McDonald's, and it's in the paper bag, and it's folded over tightly, and all, once you open the paper bag, then it's going to start getting cold. Because... Once it's sealed up like that, then it stays keeps some of the warmth in there on it. Especially now that they put that little tab over the top of it to hold it shut. And yeah. The little piece of tape thing, whatever that is, uh, yeah. the little label. Because you know what? Dumb. I, I love what the uh, what the cheese does on a fillet of fish when it gets cold. <laughs> 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 Have you ever seen? That? Ugh. 
I can only imagine. <laughs> It looks like somebody just took some yellow paint and slathered, slathered it on the uh, on the fish fillet. That's why you don't look at it. Yeah, but I mean that's only if it gets cold. It's like it's like some of those uh, like those toy kitchens that yeah. <laughs> little kids play with. A little piece of rubber cheese. Ugh. You, you know those uh, they're the people too that will say. Do you get extra cheese on the on the fillet of fish? Uh, no. Oh, you gotta do that. Yeah. You gotta get extra cheese. I can't eat it without the extra cheese. So all of a sudden you're stupid. Yeah. Because you don't know. It's kind of yeah. like the same people who will tell you you gotta watch that show. You haven't seen that. You haven't seen that documentary. Oh man, you watch it today. Today, go home and watch it. I feel like Alexis is that way with with food stuff. Yeah, she is. Especially with the cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Did you put cheese on it? No. Just, oh, you got to put cheese on it. <laughs> it's ice cream. Why would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but cheese. I saw a thing a minute ago. I showed it to Riggins that popped up. You know those those little single yeah, right. waffle iron things that are popular yeah. now? They're plastic. And they, yeah. you know, um, I saw a woman took a little Debbie pinwheel. Okay. And put it in one of those waffle things and smushed it down and toasted it flat to where it comes out looking like a waffle. Right. And then put vanilla ice cream on top of that and then drizzled that with caramel sauce. Wow. <laughs> Rob would eat that driving down the road. Yeah, I would. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. forgot, I forgot to tell you. I, uh, I bought a new uh, single-use kitchen thing. It's called the Rapid Mac Cooker. It lets you cook it in the microwave in five minutes. Blue, blue box mac and cheese. Oh, man. Really? Because yeah. it's just so hard otherwise. <laughs> I need that it's so difficult. Wait, say it again now, Rob. Say that again. It's a what? It's called the Rapid Mac Cooker. You put like a blue box mac and cheese in the microwave for five minutes and it's ready. Hmm. So you just dump the whole uh, whole box in there. Does it have a line on it to where you, how yeah. much water you put? Yep. And, well, why don't you just get Easy Mac? Because those were small containers. <laughs> Larger container. There you go. So it turns regular macaroni and cheese into Easy Mac. Kind of, yeah. yeah. But all the so I haven't it, tried it yet. But all the reviews said it tastes just as good as boiling the noodles and stuff. Mm -hmm, because it's the same concept as Easy Mac. Yeah. You just fill the water up to the line. It's got the macaroni in there, and then the cheese packet. Put that in after you drain it, or if you even have to drain it. Yeah, you might not have to drain it. Mm -hmm. I don't think Easy yeah, Mac. Yeah, Easy do. Mac, you don't. But you're right though. Mac and cheese is not complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Especially if it's just the powder kind. I'm trying it on the blue box first, and then I'm going to try it on some shells and cheese afterwards. Well, sounds like your day is slam packed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he meant both of those today, back to back. Uh, so what know, are you doing today? When boiling water is just too much. Are you doing the corn dogs today, Rob? Yeah, I'm going to do corn dogs for lunch, and then I'm going to eat leftovers for dinner. Leftover what? The stuff I made that I thought oh, yeah. made me sick. You thought <laughs> okay. poisoned yourself? I was going to say, because I know there's not going to be any corn dogs <laughs> no, left no. over. Oh, God, no. <laughs> they won't make it to the interstate, maybe. So <laughs> <laughs> That's like a mile from the, from the side, <laughs> if mm -hmm. that. So, Rob, you need to uh, you need to watch the uh, today's edition of Fend for Yourselves. Okay. Because I think you would you would probably like to do this. It's uh, andouille sausage dogs with bacon and cheese. Oh, I would like that. Yes. Just Easy to do. It up. Tear it up. Easy to mm -hmm. do. And it's not too spicy because he doesn't like stuff too spicy, but yeah. the andouille has a little spice to it. Um, but I mean, I, I'm, I don't blame you one bit for eating four corn dogs today. I don't either. Four for $2. That would be amazing. And I act like I couldn't do it if I didn't. You know? It's like, oh, you're so lucky you get to go. You have a Sonic to go to. <laughs> like there's oh. one across the street Ooh. on my yeah. way home. It's the same Sonic that Rob's going yeah. to. Lucky. So will you do the cheese tots again, Rob? Oh, yeah. Okay. And I just I just realized that the, the cheese tots normally come with a slice of cheese on it. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do the shredded cheese instead. Oh, Mr. White Tablecloth over here. <laughs> Yeah. An aristocrat. Do you, yeah. <laughs> do you order off the app in advance? You just pull up and give them your number or something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. well, let's uh, wait to hear about that, Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> I prefer the shredded cheese on my cheesy tots <laughs> <laughs> and four corn dogs. 
It's the queen's favorite meal, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Four quarters. <quarters. laughs> Share funny from the Ace and TJ family. More, more next. Now, better ingredients, better pizza means that each bite of every Papa John slice just keeps getting better. From that first bite you have to blow on to that second bite of crispy, crunchy toppings to that string of gooey, melty cheese. And just when you're thinking this cannot get any better, you get to the crust and you realize it's not just any crust. Oh, no. It's epic stuffed crust that's hand stuffed with cheese. Better ingredients, better pizza, even better when it's stuffed. From the Ace and TJ Show. So, um, Ace, are you having a sore throat or cough or something, had, or are you just eating <clears throat> cough drops as candy? My throat's been bothering me for the past, since the weekend. Oh, yeah, I heard you say that yesterday. Yeah, and then, it's just been kind of, uh, not sore, but just kind of uh, uh, dry. I've been kind of hoarse since the weekend. Yeah, he said his throat this. was sore, sore yesterday in front of some of those people we were meeting with. And, and I say, you want me to swab it for you? It's always nice. <laughs> In a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> you want me to swab it for you? <laughs> I'll fix you right up. First time I'd ever met a lot of them. <laughs> you know. Did they laugh? Oh, they yeah. Did. Oh, they did. Mm. They laughed and laughed. <laughs> I told them to piss off everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you shut up. Uh, and that was a staple. At the mill that I used to work. Yeah. Where was you yesterday? Oh, I was sick. Yeah, so throw. Want me to swab it for you? Mm. Uh, the other one that TJ introduced me to is I said sometime, one of the first times we were ever hanging out or something about having a sore throat. And he said, you want some uh, uh, Dr. Rich's magic root oil? I like, well, <laughs> thanks. I appreciate it. But no. Uh, okay. Yeah. Very similar to when he would, you know, wave to get your attention. And when you looked up, he was pointing his crotch. When he used to do that? <laughs> no oldie but goodie. Yeah. I can't do it to Rob as much anymore because he doesn't have a window into his room. Yeah. <laughs> it was like at least once a week before. <laughs> well, I was just glad it wasn't me anymore. That was all. Yeah. Or I would stick my head in Rob's room when I first got to work and I'd go, oh, hey, I got something for you. And then pull my hand out behind something with my middle finger. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Or when he would hand me something, I would take his, like, take it and guide it into my crotch. <laughs> those are the those are the things that yeah. that build bonds. Yeah, in the workplace. And in was, this workplace, yeah, mm-hmm. that was a thing for a while in high school. You go to, all right, all right, we'll see y'all later, and you go to shake hands or whatever, and somebody try to grab your hand and pull it down into their crotch. Like what? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say I wasn't guilty of it. Also, it's yeah. just. It's, you look back on it and go, that's so stupid. <laughs> I used to do that to my to my buddies whenever they whenever they were completely passed out. <laughs> I put their hand on my crotch. Really? Mm-hmm. Then I would take it off and put it back. And take it. Off. I mean, it was really. I do it quickly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's. I made song, one. Brother. I made one of my friends when he was passed out. <laughs> Uh, I made him wash it for me. <laughs> You're so he dumb. Up, he woke up and said, why do I have soap all over my hand? And why are you so squeaky clean down there? <laughs> oh, it was funny. Those jokes, you know. So many. Uh <laughs> So is Alexis ever coming back? I don't. I don't think so. I think she's probably going to die. This is probably it for her. But you know what? She had a great run. <laughs> I texted her last night, and she texted me back this morning. So no, oh. that's not unusual, though. That's true. Yeah, because she keeps her phone on do not disturb. Yeah, anytime you text mm-hmm. her, noon, three in the afternoon, six in the evening, it always says you're delivered quietly or whatever. Or silent. Like silently, yeah. yeah. Okay. But you, you know. She always she says, says it's stress, right back, She says it's stressful. <clears throat> What's stressful? To have the alert on, and also she just looks at her phone periodically to see if she's got messages. I've seen okay. her homepage one time, and it, there's so many red dot, red bubbles with large numbers on them. It's it's <laughs> got to be overwhelming. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow, that drives me nuts. I cannot stand that. 
She knows what? a lot of people. With messages, Rob? It's me- like notifications from apps and yeah. emails yeah. and text messages. And I'm just like. That's why I don't get any app notifications. Yeah. And the only thing I get are. And I'll even if I miss a call, like if it's a uh, spam, mm-hmm. I'll immediately, as soon as I see it, go to the phone thing and, and at least clear it so that I don't have that red number on there. Um, because, you know, I've looked at my son's phone before. It's like 18 missed calls, oh, 42 text messages. Oh, you know, I'm, oh, the top of my head would explode. I can't handle it. <laughs> but yeah, so, but she's an adult with a job and it's, it's in this, the, the alerts being on stress her out. Yeah. She says it's just more stressful hearing it go off all the time. And if she's looking at it, checking the message, yeah. she's constantly got her phone checking them, you know. I mean, I haven't texted her anything or asked her anything ever that she, you know, didn't yeah. respond. Yeah, me neither. But, but I can only imagine how many people she has that are trying to talk to her and everything. Yeah. Well, she's not you leaving know, anybody. That, she's not leaving anybody on red. Yeah, leaving, I'll tell you that. Uh, leaving, living that life she lives in the big city. Oh. You know, always being out and about town, and everybody being her best friend. You know, guys trying to hit her up, hook up. Mm-hmm. Mushroom men. Yeah, that's my mushroom man. <laughs> I'm sure it's very similar to your life, Riggins. You're constantly women. What's up, Riggins? Can I come see your new place? You know. Is that going to affect your dating life at all? Being out in the suburbs? Uh, no. <clears throat> I, 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 I mean, I didn't know if you, most of the women that you saw were uh, uptown in that area, yeah. kind of close to your place, or what? Yeah, there are less. Uh, Prostitutes in the suburbs. <laughs> <laughs> have Have you seriously never hooked up with one of those homeless women? No, I've never hooked up with a homeless person. Well, I, I didn't know she was homeless. <laughs> Till she, <laughs> she, t- she wouldn't leave. Yeah, yeah. Your Honor. <laughs> you ever hooked up with anybody in your building? No. Oh, damn, that sucks. I would hook up. I would hook up with a homeless woman. Yeah. Yeah. If it was her first day of being homeless. Yeah. That's nice of you. Mm-hmm. But after <laughs> that, thrill. you know. Send her uh, on her way. Yeah. Yep. Like, we, uh, I got this homeless friend that wants to, really, really wants to meet you. Would you let her stay the night so she'd, you know, oh, dodge the bullet, still not homeless yet? No. <laughs> no. Um, but I'm thinking about those, like the old women that have been homeless for a long time that are drug addicts and all that. That's that's what I, if I'm going to do it. Go all the yeah. way. <laughs> Just to say you did it? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hey, show, show me what's under that third coat. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Let me see. We peel back the layers like an mm-hmm. onion. A homeless onion. <laughs> no, I, I just always wonder, are they hooking up with each other? The homeless, right? Yeah, yeah. Like in those in those tent cities and stuff. You yeah, seen that video? Where's that video from recently? I want to say Philadelphia, but I'm not sure that that's right. But the two homeless people are just laying on their sides out on the sidewalk, just going at it. Mm-mm. Yeah. City Is that the kind of porn you're into now? No, it was on. <laughs> it was on a news site or something where I found it. <laughs> I don't think that's a category on the, the company. On the, website. Yeah. the company that brought you bum fights <laughs> <laughs> introduces a brand new. <laughs> Talk about a reality show. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Um, but you know what? Even if you are homeless and you've fallen on on hard times that have put you in that situation, and you're having to live in one of those tent cities or whatnot, straighten up. You know, just because you're homeless doesn't mean you have to be messy. Tidy up. You know, when they show when they show those on the news and everything, it's just clothes laying, it's all strewn about and stuff. Tidy it up. Keep it keep it neat. Yeah, I'm okay with that. It's just like you know they used to say, you know, just because you're poor doesn't mean you have to be dirty. That's, well, I heard that a million times growing up from my mom. <laughs> Because y'all were poor? No. Oh. Because they were poor. Come in all dirty. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, they were, which one was it? They were, <laughs> were poor when poor? she was growing up. And okay. she was like, they all, that, and then, you know, my grandfather worked his way up and they got a better house and all that. But she was always like, there's no excuse. Being poor is no excuse for not being clean or keeping your, your house, your yard straight. Yeah. 
It's a good one. Riggins. I was just curious. Let that be a lesson to you. Are your neighbors <laughs> now Riggins where you live? Do you have any idea? Young couples, I older seen couples? Them yet. Okay. Have not seen them. I've you've seen only their cars seen, in the driveway. You've only seen kids out. I've seen kids and and there I saw I saw like one guy working outside, but he was drilling and I didn't want to stop him. Yeah. You have Saturday. neighbors on both sides or are you on a yeah, corner? Yeah, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> neighbors on both sides. Have not seen either of them. Um and it's quiet. Like it's just you could hear a pin drop, which I'm so not used to. There's always like ambient noise when you live in the city. It's mm-hmm. cars going and still fire have that, still have that mattress in the in the for the moment, yeah. So we're gonna work on getting that taken care of. This weekend. mattress in the dining room. Yeah, mattress in the dining room. If we came over Saturday, do you think we could all figure out how to get it up there? My well, the, my dad's coming over tomorrow. Okay, and he's we're gonna try to fold it f- head to foot, and he's like, "I'll bring some twine." I'm like, "Twine? I guess twine is strong." I don't know. She's going to try to tie it up. I guess. And, goes, and if we ruin it, you know, he's like, you're going to throw it out if we can't figure out how to get it up there. So if we ruin it, then it, you know, nothing lost. Um, but you I can't say, think. yeah, but dad, it's a great mattress. If we ruin it, that means you can't, you're going to have to go buy me another one. If you, well, if you ruin my mattress, dad, that. you got to buy me another one. I've, trust me, I've been angling. I'm like, yeah, but if I get a new mattress, it's like $1,000. Who has $1,000 right now? Oh, wait a minute. You have a thousand dollars, don't you? And I they would deliver it. that and bring it. Yeah. Up. I saw it. You, yeah, thousand dollars. Come on, my mom's got like a shit ton of stuff for me at the house that she's been ordering nonstop for the last couple of days. She's so you've really not done any decorating or anything yet because no. she hasn't come in and because she's got yeah. it all handled. She's yeah. like, I got it. I, I'll take care of you. Yeah, so, which is nice. I'm super thankful. Mm-hmm. But that means like constant phone calls all day, and that's the price. Yeah, it's brutal when they're you know decorating your home and helping you do all that stuff. You do have yeah. to talk to them occasionally. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'd say it's not worth it. I know. I'm like, you know what? Keep the shit. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> hey, miss any part of Share Funny? Subscribe to the podcast on all major podcast platforms. More Share Funny coming up. One of the main things that we can do to make our homes stay comfortable is to make sure that there are no pests in the home. And the best way to do that is with our friends at Cardinal Environmental Solutions. Now, Cardinal Environmental Solutions has over 25 years of experience in the pest control industry. And the thing about it is, is that they are from this area. They serve the uh, entire greater Charlotte area, and they grew up here in Charlotte. They raise their families here in Charlotte. They understand the climate, the soil types, all of the various pests that invade our homes, uh, and they even deal with the bad mosquitoes that we have. So if you need someone to take care and make sure that your house is bug-free and rodent-free, then you need Cardinal Environmental Solutions. They're very easy to find. Just go to acetj.com slash cardinal, acetj.com slash cardinal, and start living pest-free today with Cardinal. Share Funny has its own Facebook group. To join, search Share Funny and get more. Now more Share Funny from the Ace and TJ family. Oh, what a treat. It's treat time. All right. Thursday on Share Funny, and that means one star script club reviews. Mm. Yes. This is where we, you know what? I need to spit out my cough drop here. (laughs) This is uh, where we go across the country and go to real strip clubs uh, in sometimes unfashionable zip codes and read real one star reviews from uh, the internet. And these are all real. You can verify them for yourself. I have changed the names to protect those who were doing the postings. Uh, we will start in Miami Beach, Florida at a place called Club Madonna. Uh, John left a one-star review. They were all grannies. They're <laughs> ugly as F, rude as F. If you're looking for a 78-year-old, go for it. But if you're young, don't go there and waste your time or waste your money on some Squidward-looking-ass grandmas. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go have fun, pick somewhere else. Trust me. Go there, and I'll guarantee you, you'll see some naked 78-year-old granny-looking whore trying to suck your D for money. <laughs> <laughs> One star. I like Squidward-looking-ass yeah. grandma. 
gives you a visual. Uh, then we can go to Austin, Texas at a place called XTC Cabaret. And this is by far the most well-organized strip club review we've ever featured on the One Star Strip Club Reviews. I mean, it's really impressive. And you'll see why in just a second. Tom left a one star review. I showed up here on a Sunday on Memorial Day weekend. Boner killer number one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe half of the girls who spoke English who approached me looking for a dance is a total turnoff. I mean, isn't a big part of the fun interacting with the strippers, listening to all their horror stories and <laughs> all that pillow talk they whisper in here? That doesn't work if they don't speak English. Boner killer number two. <laughs> Boner killer number two. Where's the professional etiquette? The stage, dan the stage dances were disorganized, and the DJ and the strippers were not getting along. They was fighting, like, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, they're jawing at each other. Have you ever seen a stripper flip off the DJ from the stage? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've never heard a fight either, yeah. but apparently it was ugly. And then boner killer number three. Hidden fees. About halfway through the evening, the waitress tells me, I have to take your beer back to my car. I have to take my beer back to my car or buy a $10 wine cooler if I want to stay. To that, I say, no, thank you. With your hidden fees and your poor atmosphere, I'll take my wad of 20s elsewhere. <laughs> One star. You have to take your beer back to the car. She's like, you got to get out or buy a wine cooler. <laughs> He's like, well, shit. Because I, I guess they want him to keep buying drinks yeah, okay. or whatever. Wow. She's like, get it, go to your car with your beer. Did, did he take the beer into the place? Doesn't sound like it. Sounds like they just wanted a certain minimum drink. Like, yeah. After so many times, it just, like after 10 minutes, all right, you need to buy another drink. or Keep, you know, keep buying. 30 minutes, whatever. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is a boner killer. It is a, <laughs> that would be a boner That's killer. Boner killer number three. He's like, he <laughs> typed that out wonderfully. Um, then we can go to uh, Playpen Gentlemen's Club in Wilder, Kentucky. Um, Thomas left a one-star view. I watched them tell the dancer not to come back because she told them she had to leave early. Then she was not allowed to wait in the bar for her ride. She wasn't even allowed on the property. The logic of making a 21-year-old stripper walk off the property absolutely floored me. I offered to give her a ride to town and was told by the bartender, if I followed her outside, I wasn't allowed back in. <laughs> I have never been banned by a bar this shitty. <laughs> <laughs> Just the complete inhumanity by the staff is enough to warn anyone to stay the F away from this place. Okay. Good for that guy, though. I they, agree with that guy. If they treat employees like this, how are they going to treat you? Mm. One star. Just because she wanted to go home early. It's yeah. the only reason. Yeah. Mm. So if you follow her out there, you can come back in. <laughs> uh, and then a few weeks ago, we we were in Green Bay, Wisconsin, at a strip club called Bean Snappers. And it got a big reaction from the people in this room and on the Internet. So I thought, hey, you know what? Let's head back to the iconic Bean Snappers in Green Bay, Wisconsin. John left a one-star review. This was the most disgusting experience of my entire life. The bouncer was a complete douchebag, and there was only about five dancers there, and only one of them was decent. Their tits were all flat, no asses. And then there was this one stripper who kept yelling, Want to see my vag? <laughs> <laughs> Hell no was the effing answer. Hell no, I didn't want to see her quote-unquote vag. <laughs> then she asked me if I was gay. <laughs> Why are you gay? <laughs> I said, if no, I'm not gay. I just didn't want to see her dirty-ass, scarred-up vagina in my face. F this place. <laughs> I can totally picture that. Yeah, She's like, what, are you gay? <laughs> Who wouldn't want? <laughs> oh, you, you must be gay then. Oh, are you gay? The only reason a man wouldn't want to see this. I think that's, one of, my, see that's one of my favorite ones ever. That's great. <laughs> Why, are you gay? He's like, no. <laughs> wow. Isn't that great? 
Bean Snappers. Mm. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> Um, then we can go to Portland, Oregon, at a place called Union, <laughs> Union Jacks. <laughs> Do you like bossy, bitchy, scowling girls? Just go ahead and make your way over to Union Jacks, where you can see a girl that doesn't just double as a DJ and a stripper, but the bartender, too. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly serving up scowls and pissy attitudes. I've asked some of the girls about her. She's apparently so bitter because she's been working there for 10 years. <laughs> So I guess we should cut her a break. I did until I found out she's dating the boss of the establishment and basically runs it for him. Yep, she's gobbling his knob. That <laughs> seems less than professional for sure. One star. But she's in there pulling triple duty. Triple DJ, stripper, bartender. Bam. Man, I, mean, I guess, it, you know, they say if you're going to run the business, you should be able to do every aspect of it. It's job security. Mm. That's what that is. <laughs> then we will uh, <laughs> we'll wrap up in La Boheme in Denver, Colorado. Uh, Jerry left a one-star review. Terrible service. Security is a giant joke. Please avoid this trashy place. The stripper named Josie tries, but maybe she needs a new profession. And the head security guard is not very impressionable. Impressionable. But he is definitely a huge dickhead. <laughs> Have fun, y'all. Or don't. One star. So those are the one star strip club reviews. Well done. Yeah. Well done. So um, with the um, boner killer number one, that yeah. guy, what was that in his first part? Did he, he said with their horror stories? Yeah. Half the fun, there's no girls who speak English for them. It's a major turnoff. I mean, isn't a big part of the fun interacting with strippers, listening to all their horror stories and whore, right? pillow talk whisper in your ear? Telling <laughs> 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 horror stories from their whore mouths. <laughs> from their filthy whore mouths. <laughs> who doesn't love a whore story? Yeah, when they're whispering <laughs> in your ear. Not to me. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you want to see that? <laughs> Yeah. Why you get? <laughs> That's what I love. Isn't that incredible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who wants to see my badge? Like you could shoot yeah. a gun through there. What? <laughs> no, it's like, I don't. Yeah. Why you gay? I don't even like looking at your face. <laughs> I can only imagine. The Share Funny Podcast is a production of the Ace and TJ family.